Mendeleev arranged the elements by atomic weights and properties on the periodic table. He left gaps where he predicted the discovery of new elements in his creation of the periodic table. Because of this, he was coined the father of the periodic table. You can see his periodic table on the right. Mosley, though, arranged the periodic table according to atomic number instead of mass. Arranging the periodic table according to the atomic number mixed, fixed the few issues that Mendeleev had with his periodic table when isotopes were discovered. This is how we arrange the periodic table today, according to atomic number. On the periodic table, groups or families have similar properties and reactivities. They're going to be in the same column. So just like your family will have similar characteristics, families on the periodic table also do. Compared to periods, which do not have similar properties, they're just in the same row. Periods also indicate the number of energy levels that an atom will have. Metalloids are found along the stair step on the periodic table. There are eight metalloids that you'll need to color in on your periodic table. You may also need to darken the stair step or draw a stair step in on your periodic table that you have for class. Metalloids are going to have properties of both metals and nonmetals. Well, what exactly are some properties of metals? Well, they're going to be shiny, they conduct electricity. They're ductile. Remember from our matter unit that ductile means that they can be pulled into wires. Malleable, also from our matter unit, we said that malleable means that when you hammer it, it's going to hammer flat instead of shatter. Metals lose electrons, that's very important. And most of them, except gold and copper, are going to be either silver or gray in color. Make sure that you color them on your notes. Notice that hydrogen, although it's with the metals, is not a metal. The properties of nonmetals are going to be similar to, are the opposite of metals. They're not shiny. Most of them are colored. They do not conduct electricity. They're not malleable. And nonmetals are going to gain electrons. So make sure that you color those. They're on the right of the stair step as well as hydrogen. Remember that we said that the protons must equal the number of electrons in a neutral atom. So the number of protons equals the atomic number. So you may remember from IPC or middle school that in level one we have two electrons. In the second energy level we have eight. And in the third energy level, we have eight. Technically, eight's not correct. We technically have 18 in the third energy level. We'll talk about that more when we get to the electron configuration unit. So drawing our Bohr diagrams, the first thing you've got to do is find the element on the periodic table. Lithium has an atomic number of 3 and a mass of 7. So writing it in isotopic notation, we have 7,3 lithium. We have 3 protons and 7 minus 3, 4 neutrons. If we have 3 protons, we also have 3 electrons. 2 would go in the first ring and 1 would go in the second ring. And for all the others, we'll use that first string that's in the center, since otherwise we'll run out of rings. So magnesium has a mass of 24 and atomic number of 12. So 12 protons, 24 minus 12 gives me 12 neutrons. And since it's neutral, 
we have 12 electrons. So two in the first ring, eight in the second ring, That gives me 10, and I have two left, which will go in the third ring. Go ahead and pause the video and try boron and silicon on your own. So boron has a mass of 11, an atomic number of five. Since it has an atomic number of five, we must have five protons 11 minus 5 gives me 6 neutrons, and my protons and electrons should equal, so that should give me 5 electrons. So two in the first ring and three in the second ring. Silicon, if we look on the periodic table, is number 14. So it has 14 protons and it has a mass of 28. So 28 minus 14 gives me 14 neutrons. Two in the first ring, eight in the second ring. That gives me 10. And so I need four more in the third ring. I'm going to pause the video and do these four on your own. Nitrogen has seven protons. It has a mass of 14, so seven neutrons and seven electrons. So two and five in the second ring. Sulfur is 16 as an atomic number and 32 for its mass. So 16 and 16, 16 neutron are uh, electrons. So two, eight, and six. Fluorine is number nine, and it has a mass of 19. So you should have got a nine protons, 10 neutrons, and nine electrons. Two in the first ring and seven in the second ring. And finally, argon is number 18, it has a mass of 39.95, so mass of 40 and atomic number of 18. 40 minus 18 gives me 22. And 18 electrons. So 288. So that leads us into valence electrons. Valence electrons are the number of electrons in the outer energy level, so the outer ring. Valence electrons are very important because they're involved in bonding. They'll determine how many it gains and how many it loses. In our picture here, we have four valence electrons. So do we need to draw a Bohr diagram every time to figure out how many valence electrons we have? The answer is no. Each group or family have a designated amount of valence electrons and that's why they react the way they do and have similar properties. So first you're gonna to need to know your family names. The first family is the alkali metals then the alkaline earth metals, the transition metals are in the center, 
The halogens are the second to last family and the noble gases are the group to the right. So looking at lithium, lithium is found in the first group, which is the alkali metals. Notice it has one valence electron. If we look at the second one, which is magnesium, magnesium is in the second column, or the alkaline earth metals. Notice that it has two valence electrons. Hmm. So the alkaline metals all have one valence electron. The alkaline earth metals all have two valence electrons. We don't have to draw it out to know that. Boron is in our third family, skipping the transition metals. So here's boron, the third one across. And notice how many valence electrons it has. It had three. And silicon is the fourth one across, and notice it has four. So you can probably guess what our next two are going to have. But looking back, nitrogen is in the fifth column. Look, we have one, two, three, four, five. And it has five valence electrons. Sulfur is in the sixth column, and it has six valence electrons. Our halogens have seven, and our noble gases have eight. Our transition metals are going to have two valence electrons. So make sure you write above the transition metals, they have two. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So looking at your periodic table, figure out how many valence electrons the following elements have. Restart the video when you have your answers. So sodium is in the first column, so sodium has one valence electron. Bromine has seven, it's a halogen. Xeon is a noble gas, it has eight. Strontium is an alkaline earth metal, so it has two. Aluminum is in the third group, so it has three. And potassium is an alkali metal, which means it has one. So how does the valence electrons relate to the charge? Well, they all want to have a full outer shell, which is eight. So they're going to either gain or lose to have a full outer shell. That's what we call an octet, or eight. So if it had one valence electron, it would lose that one to try to become a noble gas or have a full outer shell. If it has six, then it would need to gain two to have eight. Remember that our nonmetals are going to gain electrons and our metals are going to lose them. So our alkali metals have one valence electron. When they lose that one, losing electrons, remember, gives it a positive charge. And so it's going to all have a positive one. So when alkali metals combine, they have a plus one. Alkaline earth have two valence, so they're going to lose both of them, giving it a positive two charge. Noble gases are inert meaning they don't need to react, or they're non-reactive. So they have a charge of zero because they don't react. Halogens need to gain one, so they have a negative one charge. Because they have seven, they only need one more. Oxygen group has six, so they need two. Nitrogen have five, and so they need three more. Carbon and silicon will have a negative four charge. And then silver is a plus one. Zinc and cadmium are plus twos. And aluminum and boron are plus threes. 
all other elements are gonna have a variable charge, as in it varies on what their charge is. But all the rest of them are metals, which mean that they will have a positive charge of some sort. Notice that the metals that have charges are the ones that we do not use Roman numerals for when we name them. So pause the video and figure out what charge each of these elements will have. So calcium is in the second group, or the alkaline earth metals, and so it should have a plus two charge. Nitrogen is in the fifth column, or zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, because nitrogen has five valence electrons, it needs three more, giving it a negative three charge. Potassium has one valence electron, so it's a positive one. Bromine has seven, and so it needs one more, giving it a negative one. Oxygen has six, so it needs two more, giving it a negative two charge in a compound. Magnesium has two, so it's gonna lose both of those. And aluminum has three, meaning it would lose those three in a compound, giving it a positive three.